This is absolutely amazing. Check out the scale detail on this. This is Kyosho's 1969 Chevy Camaro Z28, and I absolutely love the way it looks. And that's probably because I want one of these in real life, but you know what? This model is gonna do for now. It looks like it's a lot of fun. It's based on their phaser chassis. It's a ready to run kit. It comes out of the box looking just like this. We need to see more of what's under the hood. Let's sit down at the bench and check it out. Okay, so now we can take a closer look at the Kyosho Camaro. And they did an amazing job on this. I mean, it comes out of the box exactly how you see it. And the detail is absolutely incredible for something that you could just drive minutes after pulling it out of the box. Let's go over, you know, the, the finer details of this body. And let's start off with the front here with the grill. This is a separate molded grill. It's a, a chrome grill, as you can see, with a decal over the front. Um, we do have lenses in the headlights. And you can go and put LED lights in there, which is really cool. Same with the taillights. Uh, we've got a chrome bumper up front and we even have the valance down below i mean they really went to town with all of the details on this you know up here onto the hood we've got the stripes we even have you know, the 302 logo look at those fenders there with the lines on the fenders they, they just look fantastic same in the rear they've got those body lines down uh, the chrome around the windows that just you know bumps up the scale factor in my book i mean they, they applied the window decals really nice it's a tinted window so it, you know it is clear behind there you, you could go and put an interior in there if you wanted to to, I guess. We've got chrome mirrors and chrome windshield wipers. They're not just decals. We've got actual windshield wipers on there. The door handles are decals, uh, but let's turn it around to the rear. We even have a chrome rear bumper on there. And then the, as I mentioned before, you can put LEDs inside the light housings on the inside here. So, you know, this is a decal over the tail light, but it will glow if you put an LED light in here. This uh, rear bumper section is separate. They do go and screw it on. That's the only thing that kind of takes away from the scale factor of it is we've got these, uh, you know, four screws that hold on the Lexan in the rear. But to get that scale detail into the, the body, I guess they had to do that as far as molding goes. Uh, but absolutely incredible. You know, we've got the, the decal lines down below. Uh, we've got Camaro decals on the side of the fenders. Uh, you know, everything that you would think of from the real Camaro Z28 when it came out back in 1969 is on this RC car. It just looks great. I mean, if they could have improved anything else, uh, you know, maybe finding a way to get rid of the body post because it does take away from the scale factor a little bit. It'd be cool to see some manufacturers come out with some magnetic body mounting system so these look even more scale. That would be pretty amazing. But but I do have to say, Kyosho did a great job on the replication here and it looks awesome. Even down to the wheels, uh, the wheels are chrome. Uh, they have a nice treaded rubber tire on them, uh, kind of that VTA style of tread. So uh, I mean, maybe you could run this in the VTA class. I'm not, not quite sure, uh, but for me, me, I'm just going to go out and run this in parking lots and have fun with it. Uh, but let's go pull the body off so we could talk about the phaser chassis underneath, uh, the FZ02 chassis. Uh, this is a pretty interesting looking chassis. Uh, I actually like everything that's going on under the hood here. Uh, you know, reading the box art, it, it does say that the shocks have gone through some revisions. Uh, so hopefully the suspension works nice and smooth on here. But let me just flip the body over so you can see the inside. They even went and finished it off with a silver interior versus just leaving uh, the blue paint on the inside. So I really like the way this body looks overall. Let me see if I can get it into the picture for you guys so you can stare at that while I'm talking about the chassis. I'll put the radio system over here. All right, now we can check out this phaser chassis, the FZ02. And uh, I like the way this looks. I mean, you know, just from an engineering perspective, uh, you know, they obviously went with an all plastic setup here, but they did so in a way that makes a nice rigid chassis. The suspension arms look nice and solid. Uh, and you know, it looks like it's going to perform very well. Up front here, we've got the foam front bumper for some protection, some bo adjustable body posts. So if you do wanna go swap out the body later on down the road, maybe you want this to be your shelf queen, you could go put another body on here to run it around. Uh, you know, you have that option with the adjustable body post. Right behind it is those shocks I was telling you about. So we've got a nice aluminum cap on the shock. They are an oil filled shock. Uh, so you could go and tune that with some optional oils if you want to. It's a nice short shock setup four sedan type of use. Not sure holes on the shock towers. Uh, it looks like there's a couple on the bottom of the arm, uh, but I don't think you're really gonna have to go and tune it if you're just having fun with this. The suspension arms, these look very cool for uh, you know an on-road sedan, more of a molded style of H arm, almost a K shape here. But uh, I like how at the end, they have a pivot ball that is horizontal. Usually we see a vertical style pivot ball at the end of the suspension arm. So that's a pretty interesting setup that they have there. The uh, steering knuckles on the outside 
outside are rather bulky. They've got some large bearings in there to support the uh, the axles, and they even go and capture the, the steering links in here as well. So uh, the, everything's pretty much captured. You don't have to worry about ballings popping off, which when you're out just having fun, you know, you don't want to bump into a curb, have a ball end pop off, and you got to run all over and pop back on or anything like that. But uh, the suspension looks good. It feels like it works really well. On the inside, you can go and actually adjust caster on here. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a little bit of tuning out of it, I guess you could you could just caster if you want to. I'm not going to do that. Uh, we've got some screw type hinge pins, and they mount up to the gear case in the center here, which uh, you know looks like it's all nice and bulked up where it needs to be, so it should be durable. So why don't we just go and move on to the rear suspension because we have the same shocks in the rear, nice oil filled shocks, wider shock tower in the rear to support the shocks and uh, up top it is a fixed arm and then the lower arms look similar to the front uh, I do notice that there are little balls on the arm so you could go and put sway bars on this later if you want to the rear outer hub does look very bulky as well and one thing I should mention about the hubs as well is there are brake calipers uh, fake brake calipers obviously they're plated in a red chrome looks really cool and they have a brake disc integrated in there as well that's actually part of the 12 millimeter hub that holds on the wheel and it's actually screwed on versus having a seven millimeter nut like most cars have. So a little bit different. Again, a lot of neat engineering going on in here. So that kind of rounds out the suspension. Let's start talking about the drivetrain on this. And it does have gear differentials front and rear. And I did go ahead and take it apart. It is a compressed metal that they use for all the gears in here. We've got a metal ring gear. We've got a metal bevel pinion gear. And there's metal gears on the inside as well. And everything looks really well greased up. There were O-rings on the out drives. Uh, however, I didn't see any type of gasket material between the differential cup and the, the ring gear. So uh, I don't believe you could go and put fluid in there. I think it's just a grease filled type of diff, uh, but nonetheless seems to work pretty well. And uh, it was you know, very well filled with grease, which I do like. Usually there's just a coating in there, but they did pack it pretty well. Uh, there are ball bearings throughout this entire drive line. Those will let the drivetrain spin nice and free. There is a plastic center drive shaft with some plastic out drive cups. And uh, even the axles here are a really thick gray plastic. Uh, got, they got a neat look to them. Uh, they are plastic out drives. And, and, and looking at it, it looks like you know there's enough material on those out drives so there won't be a, a you know breakage issue. Sometimes plastic out drives, they'll snap. But these look like they are pretty solid. Now I did go and pop off the rear cover so everything is sealed up. You don't have a real open drive line here so that you don't have to worry about uh, rocks getting into the gears and stuff. Uh, I took off the cover and there is a plastic spur gear and a plastic pinion gear. So that was pretty interesting that they went with a plastic pinion gear. It is a large pinion gear. If I remember correctly, it was in the 30s, maybe a 35. So it's a large pinion. So this thing should have some speed to it. I'm, I'm really interested to see how fast this goes. I bet you it's going to be a lot of fun. But that pretty much rounds out the drivetrain details on this. The, the motor mount is adjustable if you do want to go and switch the pinion gears. Let's move on to this chassis now because like I said before, it looks like it's really well designed. It's composite plastic, uh, but they have this indentation in the center here which basically gives it a center spine so you've got uh, you know a pretty rigid structure here even with these tall tub sidewalls you've got this front cover here there is very little torsional twist to this and, and for a fun vehicle I think it's built just right looks really cool and the finishing on it is just fantastic as well I mean we've got the little Kyosha logo in here we've got, even got this plate that goes down covers the servo just has a nice overall look. Here you'll be able to put your LiPo battery or nickel metal hydride battery. It has a simple Velcro strap to secure it down, even some foam pads to, to just damp the battery. But the chassis does look nice, you know, pretty smooth on the bottom. You do have this strap, but it is the fuzzy side of the strap just sticking down. All right, now let's talk about the electronics in here. Uh, it does have a standard servo, the Synchro brand from Kyosho, uh, even the Synchro radio system, which I'll show you up and close in just a little bit. There's the receiver there right behind it. Um, then a six the amp brushed motor speed controller looks a bit hobby wingish to me uh, actually it looks very close to a hobby wing speed controller to me but it does have the little chips in here so you could go and adjust from lipo to nickel metal hydride and then you know you could adjust your forward brake and reverse with the other chip it does come fitted with a t plug on there and then it has a 14 turn 550 motor black coated motor looks very cool in there and like I said, with the gearing in here, a 14 turn, I think it's going to be pretty quick. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And these, you know, it's got bullet connectors. So if you need to swap things out, that makes it easy for those of you 
that can't solder. Okay, now the only thing I think I missed was the steering on here. Pretty simple steering setup. We've got a twin bell crank with a, with a wire acronym bar actually between the two. There is a spring in the right bell crank uh, to protect the servo, simple plastic links. Uh, and then we've got these large tubes here that are, are steering stops, bump stops basically. So they, they hit the arm uh, to prevent the steering servo or to prevent the steering system from you know, overextending past where it should. But uh, overall, looks pretty awesome. Now let's just check out the stuff that it comes with. And it does come with this Synchro radio system. This is a very cool radio. Uh, this is the first time I've had one of these and I just like the ergonomics of it. We've got a rubber handle grip in the back. We've got a foam steering wheel here and it's, it's on an angle. So it's, it feels more natural when you're driving it. Up top, we've got a lot of trim dials. We've got our reversing switches. And uh, again, this uh, just a nice overall radio. You are going to have to supply the four AA batteries uh, to power it, but uh, I think that will be comfortable to drive with. All right, now we'll check out the other things that came in the box. Here's the instruction manual that comes in the box. This will get you up to speed on running the car and even shows you all the different parts of uh, assembling the vehicle as well. So that's a nice handy manual to have. A little supplement for the body as well. And then we have a bind plug here in case you need to rebind your radio system. We've got a couple of basic tools, some Allen wrenches, uh, some turnbuckle wrenches there, and then these parts. These are some extended hexes to make it wider if you want to. Uh, we've got some longer screws to go with the wider hexes. Then it looks like we got some additional plastic parts in here, some shock preload spacers and some extra ball ends for the shocks and uh, even some pistons as well. So you can go and do a little bit of tuning with those extra pistons if you want to. And there you have it. That wraps up the details on the Kyosho Camaro Z28 on the Phaser chassis. You know, we've got some pretty cool features here. We've got waterproof electronics, full ball bearings, four wheel drive, and just a killer looking body. I'm gonna go and charge up a Max Amps LiPo battery to put in here. It's a 7.4 volt LiPo 2S battery pack. So that's what you'll see in the running video. And let's go out and run it right now.
Well, I'm a little bummed out right now because I scratched my Camaro and I broke the front bumper on it, but it's because I was having so much fun with this car. Kyosho did a great job on this. This is quick, it handles really well, and again, this thing just looks killer out there on the parking lot. Took it over to a bunch of different spots because it's winter time here in New England and uh, everything is covered in sand or salt. And so it's hard to find some good spots to run it. Uh, but I took it over to a local park. That was a lot of fun. Just kind of ripping it up and down on the walking paths and stuff and actually running it over a wooden bridge. It's kind of fun just to see the, the car shake a little bit over that. Took it over to some parking lots and that's where I really got to, you know, pull the throttle on this thing, see how fast it could go. And uh, out of the box, this thing is pretty quick i will say that that 14 turn 550 motor has plenty of power in there it's got that tall gear in there so it winds up and it's pretty quick i would say you know for the ready to run sedans that are out there this is probably on the quicker side and uh you know enough to have a lot of fun with now when i was in that big parking lot i was able to get a feel for the handling and uh, on the bench i noticed this thing sits up pretty high and there isn't a real easy way to go ahead and lower it with, with some sedans you have some droop screws that you could turn in that will help lower the car down. On this, you're gonna have to remove the stock shock ends and then swap them out with the included optional ones in the kit. This will lower it down. But, you know, I don't really think you need to do that if you're just going out to have fun with it. It actually was pretty stable as is. Uh, there was no roll to it, and that's, you know, maybe why I would wanna lower it down because I was afraid of it rolling, and traction rolling is, is never fun, but, uh, you know, out there, it just kind of slid. So when you came hot into a corner, a wide sweeping corner, uh, front end would just kind of push. I had some understeer there and off power, you're able to get some, some tighter cornering. Uh, but the sidewall and the tire, I would just kind of collapse. You would see the suspension kind of bouncing around a little bit and, uh, you know, it wouldn't roll. So I'd say it's got some pretty good handling in that respect for just the, the big wide open parking lot fun. Now, when you're going over cracks and, and bumps and stuff in the, in the asphalt, it actually soaked up a lot of stuff. You'd see the car again, bouncing around uh, but again it remained stable there really wasn't any time where i had to go and reel this thing in it's it's under controllable power i think it's got a nice nimble handling setup on there and overall it's just a fun drive i i think you know again if you're just going to go out and bash in, in parking lots maybe with some friends and stuff like that this is just a great setup to go with looks super cool uh you know again as i mentioned early on i did go and break the front bumper i wound up jumping this thing i found a bump in the park a lot and i was just having so much fun with it. i'm like i'm gonna go launch this thing off the bump and over and over and over i was jumping it and uh, that's when the you know i nosedived down and it, it broke the front bumper on there uh, i did roll it a couple times when the the edge of the tire caught some cracks it would roll over then uh, but not because i was powering through a corner um, the only other thing i want to mention to you guys was the battery pack i told you i was going to run that Maxim 6500 milliamp battery pack. That was just a little bit too tall. That was like a, a 25.25 millimeter tall battery pack. Uh, I wound up using this Duratrax Onyx 5000 milliamp pack here. Um, and this one is 23.25. So just be aware of your battery height when you're going to select a battery for this. Uh, but overall, again, a lot of fun. That This radio system, I did enjoy this as well. Found it really comfortable to use. And Kyosha did a great job here on the design. The drivetrain was quiet. It looks awesome out there. It's a lot of fun. For about $230, it's a great looking kit. You get a licensed body and everything. And if the on-road seat is something you enjoy, you know, ripping up and down streets or in parking lots and stuff, or you just like the muscle cars and having replicas of it, this Kyosha Chevy Phaser Camaro is just a great option to consider.